is Anisha Nema, and I am from Miller Middle School in Cupertino, California. Today I will be talking to you about the Big Bang, and I will be simplifying it for you. The universe started as a tiny high temperature and high energy state. It was so dense and so compact that it couldn't just take it anymore. It had to explode. That is what we call the Big Bang. Imagine we're at a school and these are the 500 students and it is three o'clock in the afternoon and the doors open and the students rush out and they all, they're all across the blacktop. In universe, this blacktop is called the space-time fabric. As the kids run out, they start forming these clusters, five over here, two over here, three over here, you know, these little gossip groups, right? Now, let's say I put the popular kids, the big kids, that they just attract everybody's attention. I put them in the middle and everybody's attracted to them. In the universe, these are the galaxies. Let's say over here, this is the Milky Way galaxy. And right over here is our tiny little sun. And our Earth and all the other planets and us are orbiting around this so tinily you can't even see them right now. Do you know why the Earth rotates around the sun? Or why the moon or orbits around the Earth? Let me show you with these three things. Let's take this. This is our Earth. And this guy over here is our moon. And this little guy over here is a random asteroid. Let's see what happens when we put this Earth into this space-time fabric. See how it creates such a big indent into it? Now, let's see when I put this tiny little asteroid near it. It rolls towards it. This is a form of gravity. See, as you can see, if I just put this asteroid on it, it creates barely any indent at all, but it does create just a little bit. So when I put something that creates a bigger indent, something with the greater mass, the, the thing with the lesser mass will just get attracted to it. Now, let's see with this moon, who has slightly more mass, but I will add two things, velocity and, the mo and some momentum, which will be created with the greater mass. See, if I create an angle, it will just circle around and slowly orbit again and again and again. You see how it's getting pulled in? Well, this is because this fabric over here has some friction, but in space where there's no friction at all, this doesn't happen. The moon just orbits and orbits and orbits, which is why we have our or our, the moon orbiting around our Earth, or why the Earth orbits around the sun, because there's no friction and it just continues and continues. Do you know what a black hole is? A black hole is the largest object known in space. It is so large that there is one in the Milky Way galaxy right now, and scientists have confirmed that it is 43 million suns. Can you imagine how heavy that is? How big that is? Let's say that this is our black hole and see what happens when I put it inside the Milky Way galaxy. Everything gets sucked into it, except for these few that are not really in reach. What happens to the black hole is that it has so much mass that everything just gets in, even light. That is why it's black. See, light is made up of these little tiny particles named photons that usually they're so light and so small that they can just escape out of anything. They don't really fall into anything. They just fly around. But black holes have so much mass that even light can't escape it. That's why it's called black. That's why when you look at all the photos of a black hole, there's no light in it. Do you see how some of these particles did not get sucked into the black hole? This is because there are some objects that are too far away to be in reach of the gravitational pull of the black hole. These objects are in the periphery of the black hole, which is called the event horizon and beyond. Luckily, us and Earth are in that, and we are, and in about one billion years, it will take us that much time to get sucked into this black hole in the Milky Way galaxy. 
Today, we learned a number of concepts. We learned about the Big Bang, gravity, why things orbit around each other, and black holes. But this is just the beginning. There's still so many things that our generation, yours and mine, still have to figure out. For example, why did the Big Bang happen? And why did the chicken cross the road?